The Chinese government extends assistance to farmers in Nueva Ecija, Philippines. But what kind of aid is this? Let's find out with MJ Mondihar in his report from the town of Santo Domingo. Native farmer Milencio Taguinaldo received an invitation to go to the municipal office today. So he made his way to the Santo Domingo gymnasium despite the scorching heat. His journey was worth it as he is one of the farmers who will receive a free urea fertilizer. With the current price per bag reaching over 1,000 pesos, this aid is invaluable for him. Malaki pong tulong yung sa aming magsasaka. Lalong-lalo na sa mga mahihirap na kagaya kong walang perang magastos. For lead farmer Virgie Smith, fertilizer is a significant part of their farming process. That's why they welcomed the development and attended the distribution of free urea. Ito po sir ay napakalaking tulong para sa aming magsasaka at ito po ay uh, ginagamit namin sa aming mga pagsasaka. The urea fertilizer distributed to the farmers comes from the Chinese government amounting to 782 million pesos in value, which was received by the Philippine government last month. In fact, President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. personally received it from Chinese Ambassador Wang Chilian. Now, it can be directly utilized in the fields. Siyempre, napalaking, napakalaking tulong po considering na napakamahal ng cost ng fertilizers ngayon. Central Luzon received a substantial portion of the urea fertilizer from China, accounting for 43% of the total supply. The farmers in Santo Domingo is just part of the thousands who will benefit from it. In total, more than 2,000 bags of urea have been distributed in the municipality. The foods and a stronger momentum of our cooperation in agriculture, hand in hand, we are forging ahead to explore new growth areas. Siyempre po, nagpapasalamat tayo uh, sa ating Department of Agriculture at lalo na po sa ating mga uh, kapartners mula sa People's Republic of China dahil napakalaking uh, tulong nito sa ating mga magsasaka. With that, the beneficiaries hope for a continued cooperation between China and the Philippines in such projects. For Ghana Mobile of Philippines, MJ Mondihar, SMNI News. President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. will reportedly fly to Malaysia for a state visit a day after delivering his State of the Nation address or SONA to the Filipino people. Hannah Jane Sancho reports. President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. along with First Lady Lisa Araneta Marcos are set to fly to Malaysia for a three-day state visit from July 25 to 27, 2023. Aside from the First Lady, the President will also bring with him a delegation composed of key cabinet officials, including the Secretary of Foreign Affairs, as well as members of the economic team. In a palace briefing, the Department of Foreign Affairs said that President Marcos will travel to Malaysia at the invitation of the 16th King, Sultan Abdullah Sultan Ahmad Shah, and the two are also expected to meet. President Ferdinand uh, R. Marcos Jr. and First Lady Mayor Maria Luisa Araneta Marcos were invited by the King of Malaysia to undertake a state visit to the country on 25th to 27th July 2023. During the visit, the President will have an audience with the King of Malaysia and a meeting with the Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim to identify new areas of synergy between the two countries. The President will also meet with Malaysian Prime Minister Datu Seru Anwar Ibrahim. It can be remembered that both leaders had talked to each other during Anwar's March visit to the Philippines, wherein Marcus and Anwar stressed cooperation in the field of politics and security, especially in fighting transnational crime and terrorism. Anwar's visit to the Philippines marks the first ever official visit of a head of a government for the year 2023. President Marcus is also expected to meet Malaysian business leaders together with his delegation in an effort to seek more investment opportunities for Filipinos. During the visit, the Philippines will also meet with prominent Filipino and Malaysian business leaders to enhance bilateral trade and investment and to explore economic opportunities for the Filipino people. President Marcus is also expected to personally meet with Filipinos in Malaysia and greet them in Kuala Lumpur, according to the 2022 data from the Department of Foreign Affairs. There are around 100,000 Filipinos currently working and residing in Malaysia. Of this number, 14,488 are Filipinos working 
as household service sector. 300 are professional workers, 700 are highly skilled workers, 800 are semi-skilled workers, and 260 are general laborers. The DFA also said that the Maharlika Investment Fund is expected to be raised during PBBM's state visit to Malaysia next week. Yes, uh, it's very safe to presume and assume, it's very safe to assume that it will maybe re be raised and promoted during this visit. On the other hand, the DFA said it cannot confirm whether the Saba issue will also be discussed. It can be remembered that President Marcus has stressed the need for an in-depth talks over the issue. President Marcus has also talked about his stance on Saba claim in a blog post following Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar's visit to the Philippines last March. Pag-usapan din namin ang issue ng Saba. Yun, alam nyo naman, meron tayong claim dyan sa Saba na sinasabi natin na nasa Pilipinas yan. Ay ngayon, sila ang administrator ng Saba. Kaya sabi namin, eh, kailangan natin pag-usapan ng masinsinan yan. Yung mga foreign affairs uh, secretary namin ay mag-uusap tungkol dyan kung anong pwede pa natin. The Philippine government is expecting President Marcos to reap more investment pledges that will pave way for more opportunities for Filipinos. For God and my beloved Philippines, this has been Hannah Jane Sancho, SMNI News. Sol Jen Menardo Guevara insisted that the Philippines will focus on its own investigation into the drug war and will start prosecuting those guilty of the crime committed in the drug war. Meanwhile, President Bongbong Marcos said that the Philippines will now totally end its communication to ICC. Let's find out more about this with Margot Gonzalez. Solicitor General Minardo Guevara insisted that the Philippines has no legal duty to International Criminal Court or ICC. This was after ICC Appeals Chamber said that their judgment on the appeal of the Philippines is not on the jurisdiction. In a message, Guevara said that the Philippines will now focus on its own investigation and prosecution of the crime committed during the drug war of the past administration. According to Guevara, President Marcos had already agreed to end the country's engagement with ICC. Basta tapos na lahat ng ating uh, pag-uusap sa ICC at uh, kagaya ng sinasabi ni, na, namin kaya mula sa isimula, we will not cooperate with them in any way, shape or form. They are talking about Filipinos, their alleged crimes are here in the Philippines, uh, the victims are Filipino, bakit napupunta sa Dehig? Kaya dito, tama, that's it, we have no more appeals pending, we have no more actions uh, uh, being taken, uh, so... Uh, I suppose that that puts an end to our uh, our dealings with the ICC. As to whether ICC investigators will be allowed to enter the Philippines, Guevara said he will leave the matter to the Justice Department and the Bureau of Immigration. DG Secretary Crispin Amulia already said that ICC is not welcome in the Philippines, saying that the foreign court may commit usurpation of authority if they will force themselves here in the country for their investigation. Rimulia also said that he has yet to make a directive to the Bureau of Immigration and still has to know the representatives of the ICC who might possibly enter the Philippines. Pag-uusapan pa namin ng mga sinsinan, alamin pa natin ng mga kung sino-sino yung mga taong maaari pumunta rito upang ipatupad ang kailang nais na makakadil ng madilim na balak sa ating bansa. Madilim sapagkat... Ito ay panghihimasok sa ating, uh, isa, na ating, sa, sa isang malayang republika. According to the Justice Secretary, it's better for the ICC to just interfere with countries that do not have a working justice system. Puntahan nila ang Sudan, puntahan nila yung mga lugar na magugulo, puntahan nila ang, uh, yung mga ibang lugar sa Afghanistan, puntahan nila ang Haiti. Maraming mga bansa na nangangailangan ng ICC, hindi tayo yun. For God and my beloved Philippines, this has been Margot Gonzalez, SMNI News.